Awesome. If you're just joining us, welcome. It's lovely to see you all. I am going to give folks a minute or two to sign in. And while we're waiting, I'll invite you all to say hello in the chat. Um, so I can type this in too. Well, if you want to share your name, your location, and your farm or organization in the chat, we'd love to know where everybody's coming from today. You're just signing on, welcome. Lovely to see some familiar faces and lots of new faces. Hi, Astrid in Arizona. Hi, Acres Project in Pennsylvania. Max. Hey, Brittany, Minnesota, Jersey. All right, we're coming from all over the place. Ohio, welcome. Delaware, welcome. Great to see everybody. Hello, Red Wiggler team. Oh, BC Canada. Awesome. Welcome. All right, if you've just joined, I'm just gonna give it 30 more seconds for folks to get in the room. Feel free to keep checking in in the chat, your name, your location, and your farm or the organization you're with, and we'll get going in just a minute here. All right. All right, I think, hi, Cindy, hi, Katie, hi, Nick. All right, it's so great to see people coming from all over. All right, I think I'm gonna get us going here. Um, folks might keep joining and that's great, um, but I'm gonna kick us off. Um, I'll start with a quick, just one quick note on housekeeping. Um, if everyone could stay muted while you're not speaking, that would be awesome just to reduce background noise. Um, we've got a great group here today, so we want to make sure we can um, hear just whoever's speaking. So that's one quick reminder and we'll dive in. Um, it's really great to see everybody. We're at the third and um, final webinar of our March Lunch and Learn series. And today we're talking about um, adaptive farming strategies. My name is Casey. I'm the project coordinator for the Care Farming Network. Um, and I'm really excited to be here with you all today. We've got some great speakers and I think it's going to be a great conversation. Um, so as I mentioned, this webinar is part of our Mark Lunch and Learn series, which is all about supporting care farmers with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Um, and if you're brand new to the Care Farming Network, um, just a quick bit about us. Um, we're a network of care farmers, as our name implies. Um, and that's you all. And we are uh, working to advance the therapeutic uses of farming practices by connecting new and established uh, programs um, to help build capacity and increase the quality of our work and provide technical support to, um, to you all. Um, we know that a lot of our members in this network um, work with various different populations, but this month we're focusing on um, care farmers with IDDs in honor of March being Developmental Disabilities Awareness Month. And this series is supported by a grant from Northeast SARE um, that's helping us to, in our effort to build capacity for care firms. So we're really grateful for them, to them for um, helping us all to be here today. Okay, so um, without much further ado, today we have um, an awesome set of speakers. We're gonna be hearing from folks from three different farms 
uh, Red Wiggler Farm, Community Farm in Maryland, Little Otter Flower Farm in Virginia, and Vertical Harvest Farms in Wyoming. So um, we're going to introduce everybody when we get to their presentation. Um, and I will ask you all to please hold your questions or make note of your questions until after all three presentations. We're going to move through um, all the presentations in one fell swoop, and then we'll have a good amount of time at the end for Q&A and conversation. Um, so uh, I'm going to turn it over first to Charlie, who is a grower at Red Wiggler Community Farm, um, to tell us about their adaptive farming strategies. So over to you, Charlie. Okay. Um, Red Wiggler is a local community farm that produces fresh, organically grown vegetables and herbs, as well as flowers. We distribute our produce through a CSA program. Half our produce is delivered to food banks and other low-income members of our community. We start greenhouse work in January and finish the season in November. Next, in our volunteer program, volunteers help staff members grow and harvest the food. The education program allows you to learn about the farm and how we produce our food. You can sign up for a tour of the farm or come to an event. You can also be an apprentice. Our apprentices learn about farming and experience in inclusive community. Our grower program offers a job, job training and coaching. We provide a chance for people to see what they can improve on and what their strengths are. The Care Farming Network is also a program of Red Wiggler and all our staff enjoy contributing. Now I'm going to tell you about a really great tool. The Infinite Dibbler is a manually operated tool that has a large that has large wheels and with spikes that put holes in the ground to show us where the plant. The wheels make marks in lines that are evenly spaced so that you don't have to make the mark yourself. The spikes on the wheels make the make precise marks for transplanting or direct seeding in the field. You can adjust the space between the spikes and in between the lines. When you buy your dibbler, you'll want to choose how many wheels you buy. You can choose the different widths and one person or two person models. Our dibbler red wiggler is made for one person and has three wheels. The dibbler costs about $200 and is made by Two Bad Cats LLC. On the day of the transplanting, when you need to use it, you first adjust the spacing between the spikes in a safe place such as your shed or barn. You can reference the spacing chart that comes with the dibbler. Then you can take it to the field. It helps to stretch the tape measure down the bed to have a straight line to follow. To make the marks, roll the spiked wheels onto where you would like to do the transplanting or direct seeding. The person using the dibbler walks in the green aisle while the dibbler rolls on a designated stretch of soil, creating marks for the transplanting or direct seeding process. This job takes a lot of hand-eye coordination, so sometimes we use a partner to help from the other side. <clears throat> Some of the advantages of the implement dibbler include making weeding, harvesting, and transplanting easier for groups and staff. First, the marks clearly show where to plant. This separates the job of figuring out where to plant from actually laying out and planting. We like to separate jobs into small tasks so that more people can learn each piece. Having all the marks at one time allows us to spread out a lot of people down the bed doing multiple tasks at the same time. We like everyone to have a job that fits them so no one is left waiting around. In the long run, having very straight rows make it easier to run drip tape down the bed, as you can see in these onions. And sometimes things get very weedy. If the lines are straight and spacing is even, it makes it easier to find the plants in the weeds. 
Here you can see volunteer and grower using the lines to rescue beans from really bad weeds. These are the advantages of the Dibbler. Thanks for listening. Thank you so much, Charlie. The infinite Dibbler sounds awesome. Okay, next up, we're gonna hear from Max, um, who is with the Little Otter Flower Farm. So over to you, Max. Hi, my name is Max Legassi from the Little Otter Flower Farm. I started the Little Otter Flower Farm to help people with autism, develop job skills, and find employment around the community. Unfortunately, the unemployment rate among people with autism is about 85%. And today we will be talking about doing daily reflections as part of our adaptive webinar. And at the Little Otter Flower Farm, doing daily reflections helps us improve the skills and the work that we do on the Little Otter Flower Farm. We do one thing that we did well of glow and one thing we need to work on or as a grow. Some examples are where we use them are role playing, working with interns, and being at the farm's market and doing grandmax of kindness. We move forward. Glows are what we do well in my reflections. Glows help us know what we should keep doing well after practice makes better. Glows also show us that we are good at improving some specific skills like conversations and collaboration or group. Move forward. Grows are what we need to work on and grows help us try better next time after whenever we have done something that needs more practice, like not being careful with the flowers when making arrangements or not being careful with group work and practice makes better. Move forward one. In conclusion, reflections help us grow flowers, people and community, our farm's motto. Thank you. Thank you so much, Max. I love, I'm a big fan of reflection, so I love that you are using that tool. Okay, so um, last but not least, we're going to hear from uh, Cindy and Sean, um, who work with the Vertical Harvest Farms. Um, Cindy Hannon is the director of the Farms Grow Well program and Sean Stone is the facilities manager. And um, do you all wanna say hello before I play this video or should I go ahead and kick it off with this uh, little uh, three minute video? Uh, let's do the video first, then we can talk after that. Perfect. Okay, we tested this audio earlier, so it should be, work well, but if anybody can't hear it, just let us know. Hi, I'm Nona Yahya, CEO and co-founder of Vertical Harvest Farms. This is our flagship farm here in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, the first hydroponic vertical greenhouse built in North America. We grow 100,000 pounds of local produce 365 days a year on a tenth of an acre, despite the fact that we have an incredibly short three-month growing season. It's gorgeous on the outside, but the most beautiful part is what's in here. Grow Well is our unique approach to customized employment, the beating heart of our company. We developed the model to provide inclusive career building employment for people with disabilities. And this is my incredible Force of Nature co-founder who designed it. Hi, I'm Caroline, our Chief of Human Potential. Did you know one out of three people with disabilities in the U.S. are unemployed? And it's the single largest minority group in the country, one that any of us could find ourselves a part of at any time. That's why we've always focused on ability, and we try to help remove barriers to meaningful, fulfilling employment. Every employee who invests in us wants to feel like we've invested in them. So today we offer Grow Well programming to all our employees. It's why we say we grow both food and futures. I used to work in an environment where I couldn't grow. Six years ago, I started my job here at Vertical Harvest. And now I'm an experienced farmer and a microgreens expert. I've been here for five years. 
We are like one big family here. I have opened up a lot, both professionally and personally, with the Grow Wild model. It helps us to be successful both inside and outside the greenhouse. Since I've been working here, I've been able to build my confidence. I've been able to do everyday things independently. We deliver to grocery stores, restaurants, and schools and hospitals year-round, even in the middle of a snowstorm. Now we are able to produce greens that are sustaining our community. Our goals are not small, and the challenges we seek to solve are not simple, but we've proven that the impact we can have is profound. We rise up. We stand together. We are so glad to serve you in Jack and Hall, Wyoming. We grow well. Amazing. That's such a great introduction. And uh, yeah, I'll turn it over to you now, Cindy and Sean. Go first. You go, you go first. Hi, I'm Sean. I'm the uh, facility manager lead. I take care of the facility, make sure all the, the machines that we have in the facility oh, working and uh, Good girl. just make sure everything's going before everybody gets there and uh, yeah and you've been here how long uh, almost eight years celebrating anniversary this weekend this coming saturday is my year at the vertical farms awesome. and my name is cindy hannon i am the grow well director here at our jackson wyoming farm um so as you saw caroline and nona talk about hi grow well <laughs> um, so Grow Well is our inclusive employment model, um, and it takes a look at what we do professionally. We call that work well. Um, who we are is our be well. We, we think about, using, we use the eight universal pillars of health around emotional, physical, financial wellness. Um, and the third part is do well, which is about community advocacy. Um, as you can see by this picture that's on the screen, um, Jackson, for those of you uh, who are familiar, not familiar, we're about an hour and a half south of Yellowstone National Park on the border of um, Idaho. Uh, Wyoming is arid. Um, and so being in this valley, which means we're surrounded by mountains on all four sides, um, we really only have about a three month growing period. Uh, and to get into Jackson, the town of Jackson, you either have to go over a mountain pass, which is very steep and I don't like it, um, or you can come in from the north, which is just going to have way more snow. Um, so in Jackson, our building is on a tenth of an acre. Um, it is three floors. Uh, our growing happens on the second and the third floor. The first floor is uh, where we package and uh, clean everything and have our cold storage. Um, so in the video, I love the Dibbler. That thing is amazing. You might have seen Michelle. Uh, she was putting seeds in. Michelle's our Dibbler. Yep. We do it by hand. <laughs> we do a lot of things here by hand. Um, I love yeah. to, um, how I think Girl. you had mentioned, or maybe it was Max. Um, we too um, think about smaller tasks uh, so people, so we can all learn a little bit more. There's about 20 of us between full-time and part-time working in the farm, anywhere from four hours a week. Um, Sean is a full-time yep. employee, full-time salary employee. Eight hours a day. Monday through. Friday. Sometimes we have to work. Weekends. Woo, bummer. Not often, but sometimes things break. <laughs> um, Sean knows how to run the boiler, uh, which has to heat the building. We have a lot of snow here in Jackson. It's actually snowing right now. Um, and so, yeah, we, we primarily grow microgreens, lettuce, um, and in Jackson, we grow tomatoes. Um, we are expanding. We have a new facility that's being built in Portland, Maine, outside of Portland, Maine. Um, they will not grow tomatoes. Um, and then a potentially a new one coming in Detroit. Who am I forgetting about us, Sean? We too, ha we have something called a grow three. So Max, I loved your example about the 
the grow and the glow. I might reach out to you after to see how we could um, incorporate some of that. We have a grow three, which is dependent on how often you work. So Sean and I are full-time employees. So yep. our grow three is once a week for 30 minutes. And it really is, how are you? What are you working on? And how can you help? So it's done with a manager. Um, and really we think about what it is that you are interested. So we have growers, we have folks who are in the packaging department. Um, we have a team that does deliveries. They're in the fulfillment department. The facilities department, which um, Sean is part of, is making sure that this, this indoor building, um, which really likes to fight us a lot, mm -hmm. um, frozen doors and um, water. <laughs> we have a lot yeah. of water that needs to be mopped up um, in, in lots of places. Um, and then we have uh, a food safety team as well as um, Nikki, who you also saw in the video, it works very closely with me. We are the, we are the grow well part of, of the farm. Do we want to say anything else? Well, <laughs> what do you think about working at Vertical Harvest? What's one? It helps me uh, like get out of my shell. Like I used to be like, really shy but now I'm really wide open to talk to people teach them how what I do in the vertical farm like uh go fix broken pipe or broken lights that we have to help the produce grow and uh I'm kind of like electrical person too because I know how to fix wires and stuff like that so yeah, so uh, thank you for inviting us. Thank you for being allowing us to be part of this panel and we'll turn it back over. Thank you so much, Sean and Cindy. Sorry for changing the slides up on you there for a second. Um, awesome, it's so great to hear from you all. And I love that we have a combination of these farming tools that you're using and also these kind of um, practices that you're using um, just in terms of how you help each other grow um, while you're doing the work. It's lovely. Um, and we really hope this will spur some great conversation. We at the Care Farming Network also wanted to put a few more ideas on the table um, very briefly. Um, so um, some of you might know that we had our inaugural Northeast Winter Retreat in Maryland in January, where we gathered about 20 care farmers. Um, and we had a great conversation about adaptive tools and strategies there as well. And um, so these are some of the tools that came, uh, that people shared that they're using on their farms as part of that conversation. Um, ergonomic trowels, this two wheel dump cart, which looks pretty cool and um, pelleted seeds. Um, so we wanted to just put some more ideas in the mix, um, things that we've heard that care farmers are using um, that are working well for them. I, I don't know, Kate or Andrea, if you want to say anything else about the conversation we had in January before we move to discussion. I'm good. I'm just eager to hear what other people good. have to share. Thanks. Great. Great. Well, then we'll um, open it up to you all. Um, you're most welcome, of course, to ask questions of our wonderful speakers to learn more about um, that, what they shared with us. And we also wanted to put a couple of questions on the table for you. Um, what tools and techniques are you using? Um, are you using anything that was talked about today? What else are you using? And maybe what's on your wish list or what would be helpful? Um, you are most welcome to type questions um, and comments or suggestions or shares in the chat. But we also love to get some more voices in the room. So if you're um, willing to be brave and uh, come off mute and ask a question or share something from your own experience. We'll ask you to maybe raise your your Zoom hand or your real hand, and um, we can take questions and comments that way. So anybody want to um, kick us off with a question or a share? Tracy's typing in the chat. We use a 
a I, walk I behind a small cloud. I use a gorilla car to Sorry, carry Max. tools like things like wood chips and cardboard efficiently with dumping technology. It's like the two-wheel car. It has four wheels instead. And I also use a hoi hoi knife to dig deeper through the cardboard with the sharp blade. Max, what's a hoi hoi knife? It's a tool. It also has measurements on the side to know how deep to dig. Oh, that's great. Here's an example of a hoi hoi knife with the measurement lines, actually. That's awesome. Other people use the hori hori knife. It sounds like the gorilla dump carts are popular. Um, sorry, I don't know your real name. A pony power. Oh, that's an awesome uh, Zoom name. What's the benefit of pelleted seeds? Could anybody answer that? I'm certainly not the person with that knowledge. What's the benefit of pelleted seeds? I know I can say the benefit to us. This is Gracie. Are you hearing me? Yep, we can hear you, Gracie. Okay. Um, well, they have something around them which helps them sprout. But the biggest benefit to me is that, especially on small seeds like lettuce or kale, it's a round, and what we get is it has a round white pellet which can be more easily held in a finger or put in the palm and not go everywhere or, or even blow away. So they're a little bit heavier. They're quite a lot bigger as well as having, um, you know, the some nutrient thing which helps them to sprout. But the, the, the manipulation thing is big for us, for who we work with. And I'll just add, at least for us, add on to that. <clears throat> we don't get to use them often because they're more expensive, but um, since they're easier to hold and place, um, you're less likely to drop more than one seed at a time. So then you end up saving time because you don't have to come back and do as much thinning. Like we usually get pelleted carrot seeds. Mm -hmm. So it's a time saver as well. I'm going to add to that that we can get both carrot and uh, lettuce, but especially carrot on a little paper strip thing. And you just put the whole strip in and cover it lightly. Um, and, you know, so blah, 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 strip they're all, it's also more expensive. We're lucky that we get a lot of seeds donated to us and we don't have that big an operation. So for what we're doing so far, that also works well and spaces things as well. The, the strips also space the carrots. <laughs> That's great. Thank you, Gracie and Olivia. I think, did, uh, did I see the Bittersweet Farm folks? Did you have a question or a comment? Well, uh, for a decade, I used to have trouble with my team. I couldn't, I wasn't able to work, work independently and they tried all sorts of things. And it wasn't until they came up to the list that I was able to just look at the list, go out by myself and do that without anybody around or anybody getting prompts or anything. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. All right. Other questions, comments, and please remember if you can to raise your hand. If you don't know, the raise your hand option in Zoom should be on your bottom toolbar under reactions, I believe, though correct me if I'm wrong. And if you're on video and you want to raise your real hand, we'll try and see you that way too. All right, Olivia's got a question in the chat. How do you adapt for sitting on the ground? We use stool. Do any of our speakers want to answer that? Looks like folks at Bittersweet might know there. Sure thing. Can I help? 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 Can I
Oh. Bittersweet folks, do you want to tell us how you sit on the ground? I do the weeding and what do you use? Do you sometimes use the, the knee pads? Yes. Like the foam pads or sit on a bucket? Yes. Do you want to tell them about that? I use gloves and use a bucket or a kneeling pad. Awesome. Gloves, buckets, kneeling pad. Yeah, Melissa says they use knee pads too. Astrid says they use plastic chairs. Great. Lots of ideas there. Thank you all for sharing. Anyone else ideas for working when you're sitting on the ground? Oh, Katie, that's cool. Katie says we have a benches that flip over to kneelers. Benefit is the handles to get back up. Awesome. And yeah, using raised beds as well. Olivia, curious, are the stools that you use working for you or are you looking for a better solution? Uh, yes and no. It's an issue is getting back up. Um, so I'm interested to see like if you, um, whoever said the thing about the bench, if you want to like give a name brand or something, that would be cool. Um, but yeah, they also, um, they have wheels. So it's helpful to like travel down the aisle, but in theory, but it's actually quite hard to, um, to push yourself along. Um, so they work once you're on them, but yeah, getting on and off them can be difficult. Katie, I don't know if you have the ability to come off mute and share more, but if you do, it sounds like folks are interested to hear more about these benches that turn into kneelers. Yes, I was just looking to see if I could find a link to one, but if you go online and search for kneeler bench for the garden, you'll see them. They're foldable, so they fold down. They've got foam pad on both sides, so whether you're sitting or you're kneeling, it's soft, and when you're kneeling, because the bench is flipped over, then you can use those, the bench legs to get back up. And that's, to me, is that's huge. And they're fought over on our farm. Yeah. So I'm going to have to put that in the budget for, to get some more next year. They're not super expensive. That sounds awesome. Thanks for sharing, Katie. Yep, and we have this additional um, suggestion here too from Christy that sometimes folks will use a cane or a strong stick to help them get up if you are using a stool. That sounds great. Oh, thank you, Kate, for dropping that link in there to the kneeling benches. We would love to have you introduce yourself, Jonathan. I think now's a great time. All right, you're unmuted. <laughs> Hello. Joe. What's your name? My name is Jonathan. You want to share about where you work? I work at White 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 House. What do you do here? I water and I seed and I we and I. What do you love to grow? I love to grow hot peppers. That's my that's that's my expertise. How how I grow my hot peppers is hydroponically. I I grow my pe hot peppers hydroponically during the winter. When spring comes, I when the plants are growing enough, I put them into pots. With with dirt and pots, and I will grow any uh, hot hotter the better peppers for me. I'm growing the Nago viper. That's a hot one. And the cinnamon pot bubblegum. And the cinnamon pot dougala. And the cinnamon pot brain strain. 
I'm currently growing some jalapenos, some poblanos, some, I think, serranos, and cayennes. There's many other peppers I'm growing right now, but that's that's my expertise. It is it's just because I love growing them so much. I have so much pep pop, pop pepper seeds. Thanks for sharing, Jonathan. Things are getting really big this time of year. I have a question, Jonathan. When you're handling the plants. The peppers or the seeds do you have to wear gloves or do anything else are they spicy at that point or not until you cut them open not until you cut them open awesome. just because i do put on gloves for the, su the super hot like the, like the repair on reaper and the naga vipers i usually put on gloves for those kind of peppers because they they will put you in pain if 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 you don't wear gloves and you are rubbing your eyes or your nose or your ears. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. It does sound like you are an expert in hot peppers and you're growing a lot of different kinds. That's really amazing. Gracie's got on her wish list an electric golf cart. Yeah, that sounds like it would be handy, Gracie. I wonder if other folks are using those. Melissa's asking, does anyone else use paper chain pots? We want to learn more about them. Melissa, would you mind sharing what those are? Um, maybe other folks know, but I surely don't. <laughs> it's kind of a system that you buy. You grow the paper chains in your greenhouse. They're like flats made out of paper. And then when you take them to the field, they sort of pull out into a long chain of transplants. Then you can either bury them with a machine or by hand. Um, so we're curious to know if anybody on a care farm has used them and if they work well for you and which setup you're using. Maybe it's fairly new and no one else is using it yet. It sounds really handy. I've never heard of that. Maybe it's just too new on the scene, but we'll keep that in mind for sure if we hear about it um, and let you know. <laughs> Have you tried it yet or you're just interested? We're on our first set of chains. <laughs> they were seated yesterday, so very new to us. Well, maybe we'll be looking to for some <laughs> uh, <laughs> feedback on that. Katie's wondering, do you have to take the plant out of the paper pot? Uh, no, it stays in the chain. The chain kind of dissolves once it gets into the ground. And it's certified organic, I should say. We're certified organic. The paper chains are just now allowed. That's why it's new to us, because they weren't allowed before. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that about that with us. Um, <clears throat> I'm seeing this comment from 21 Roots Farm that you're using a seeding square in your raised beds. And thanks for sharing this link to the system that you've set up for that. Could you, I don't wanna put any anybody on the spot, but if you're willing to share a little bit more about that, it sounds really interesting. Yeah, I don't have the actual, I just grabbed this, um, but it's like a square, it's a square foot. So it's for square foot gardening. And then I've created like, this is what our bed is. And so obviously like cucumbers are gonna take up four of the squares um, and then they're color coded. So the carrots are red. And so then that correlates with how many holes and how many plants you can plant in each space. So, um, and then it has a little funnel. So you're showing like where to put the seed. And then it has a little dibbler tool to poke the hole as deep as you need for whatever seed. And then it has a little um, spot on the end to put the seed so you can put the seed in and just have someone dump it in. So it just gives a lot of independence and it helps visualize what we're doing. That's really amazing. Thank you for sharing about that. And there's more information about that on this link to your seedingsquare.com. 
Yeah. So there's like basic information. And then I kind of just took it and made my own for what we were going to use, but they provide a lot of, a lot of great information. That's awesome. I might follow up with you if you'd be willing to share images of those oh. really awesome visuals you created. Yeah. <laughs> All right, seeing other great stuff in the chat. I will just invite folks who are commenting. Mikey, the things you're sharing sound great. If you'd like to share more, um, please feel free to come off mute and do so. Um, let's see, what else did I miss here? I'd be curious to hear if folks have any um, practices like what Mac shared around the glow and grow practice. Are there things like that? or I forget what you called it, Cindy, but you have a, a similar kind of like check-in process you use. I'd love to hear more about the practices like that folks are using on their farms as well. Um, Gracie, we use an electric golf cart. I saw that you had a question if anyone was using them. We've been using one for a very long time. Um, and we've trained four or five employees uh, with developmental disabilities to use them over the years. Were you uh, able we to get one donated? Were you able to get one donated? Um, I don't think our original one was, but we're working on getting a second one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that one we are paying for through a grant. Use. Yeah, um, I'm getting feedback from around the room too that our first one was used. You can find um, much cheaper golf carts if you buy them used. Um, it's very, very helpful. Yeah, good thing to have. All right, Andrea's got a question for Sean. Um, what are the problems that you typically fix, Sean? Uh, we used to have metal, uh, carousels that we grow our sweet mix or on, and usually by every few days, like parts broke off and then we have to shut down the, uh, the, the production on that carousel to fix it like trays pop off or chain came off yeah then we t then we get it on we get on it pretty fast so we don't lose production and it will probably take like for me and my other coworker that does this we it probably takes mo probably most all day all day we got rid of them yeah <laughs> and then the parts that we have they don't exist because uh the company that we used to get them in europe went out of business so we we had to take we had to get rid of them can you talk about how you work with nathan on the irrigation systems and the emitters oh the emitters clogged? oh <laughs> we, we used we have irrigation pipe that we use uh, emitters on that uh, usually gets plugged up with algae. And uh, we we work on those sometimes to get them unplugged so that the water does go through and water our plants so it doesn't go dry. Sean recently had to also um, work with the team and take a wall apart. Yeah. <laughs> um, because we got a new machine and it didn't fit. Uh, so he and another coworker are in the process of putting the putting the door back on so the drywallers can come. Um, so we have different being an indoor hydroponic farm, like we don't have the same things as being outside. Um, so a lot, oftentimes a lot of what breaks is the mechanical parts. Yeah. Um, so Sean has a daily checklist. He's an early riser. He gets there before almost everyone in the farm. Um, and does a check walk through check through of um, starts in the boiler, the mechanical room to the water systems. When we had carousels, which grew our lettuce, that was a big thing. 
Um, and so he sort of does the, the daily assessment of where, where do we need to go? Yeah. Um, and then works with his boss um, on, on the technical pieces and then the vendors and contractors that have to come in and help us, plumbers, electricians, and things like that. But he's done everything in the farm. I did right? growing. I did, uh, well, I, I'm i like, when I first started there, I was a farmer. Then I moved to packaging that I packaged like all the produce that we have, like uh, the tomatoes that we get down from our third floor, our sweet mix. I help them package, weigh them, package them, put them in boxes. And now they move me to a facility. That's my main goal is to make sure the building is operational. And you came, you came to us from the lumber yard. Yeah, right? in Idaho or in Jackson? In right. Jackson, I used to work at a lumber yard that uh, I run forklifts, uh, power saws, you name it. And so it's you. That was your desire, yeah. was to get back to the mechanical. Yeah. And for about a year, he worked. His boss was actually remote. His boss had moved to uh, Portland, Maine, to be in our newest yeah. facility. Um, so Sean had to also learn how to be a hybrid coworker um, and do check-ins with his boss um, via video chat and also be able to use iPhones and video and, and show Chris um, what was happening to get some instructions and some clarity. So, uh, so over the years has also learned his technical skills, a little bit more comfortable with a computer. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... Can I tell them, like, uh, like during the, the harsh winter, we had our boiler shut down mm -hmm. and they, like, I was like 15 minutes away and everybody else like an hour or so away. And I told my boss that it was in Maine that I'm on my way to the greenhouse so like I, I can figure out what's going on with the boiler. And it was pretty cold. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome sean thank you for sharing so much it sounds like you are a real jack of all trades that's impressive um i see that charlie maybe you can share with us about another tool you're using called the earthway push seater i think we'd love to hear about that yeah so you have this thing that uh doesn't have a bottom but where you have a little inlet that you pour a seed in and then when you push it um it like kind of falls or sprinkles down into the, the area where you want it in a straight line um might be a little bit harder to use because it requires you to keep it very steady So what are some of the crops that we use it for? What was it that you got to do with? Do you remember? Uh, I think it was parsley, maybe, or cosmos. Maybe it was cosmos. It may be cosmos. I think it was cosmos, yeah. Yeah. So we, we tried to get a lot of people engaged in using the Earthway. Um, usually on crops that are good learner crops. So like this week, we used it for um, peas that we're going to use for the vegetation of the pea, like pea shoots. Um, and so we use the earthway for that. And then sometimes we use it for um, flowers that we're using kind of as beneficial flowers. It's a really great learning opportunity. So if the lines go a little crooked, no big deal. And then once we figured out that people can do it well, then they move on to more advanced crops. And it's a lot of fun to use. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing about that. Is anybody else using a push seeder? Or have questions about it? Uh, I do use the Bittersweet. Earthway push seeder too. And I use it in the beds, you know, out in the hoop houses and the greenhouses. So I know exactly what you're talking about. And 
I'm also a jack of all trades type of person. I do gardens, I do seeding, I do I do the stuff you put on that makes your plants grow better. So I'm also a jack of all trades here and I can do that quite independently because of this, the, the list that I use. And so that's my experience with that. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. What's your name? I'm sorry. Phil. Phil? Thanks for sharing, Phil. We've got another jack of all trades in the room. Y'all are, uh, it's really impressive to learn about all the skills you guys have. Yeah. And someone for me too, there's a nurse. There's a lot of people that I have a question for you, Max. I remember that at our um, retreat, we talked about some tools for harvesting that were helpful, some pruners and scissors. What do you like to use when you're harvesting your flowers? I like to use snips and buckets of water. And okay, it's just- So you put the flowers in the water. And rubber bands, if I bunch them together by different types. And it's hard because it's sometimes time consumption can be stressing out me out. Mm. So we put our schedule of harvesting on. And that would help me. Can you share a little but bit about I'm just also a morning boy? Mostly. Yeah. It's just I'm the earlier bird boy. I'm a morning person too. What kind of, uh, Melissa's asking, what kind of snips do you use? We use, they are standard snips here. Yeah, we use the ARS snips mostly. Awesome. Um, they tend to be really versatile. Yeah. You can cut lots of different things with them so you don't have to switch snips all the time. Oh, that's great. Um, and the, the thing uh, thank do, you for sharing, Max. The thing we do most with harvesting ahead, Jen, is, sorry. is we um we bring buckets in the field. We harvest all of our flowers into water, and we harvest all of our flowers before the sun comes up. And so, as Max says, it's pretty stressful. So we have two big whiteboards here. I'll probably show you our big whiteboards. We have two big whiteboards in our greenhouse. So one of the things we've started is putting our harvest schedule on the whiteboards and how much of each and bunching it in the field and the order of the harvest. So, you know, some flowers can tolerate being harvested when it gets a little warmer and some can't. So it's, it, last year we improved a lot. That's awesome. Thank you all for sharing. And I'm with Cindy. I love a good checklist. <laughs> Sounds like you've figured out how to well organized um, when you're trying to do this really stressful task. Um, any other, um, I'm curious, other folks have harvesting tools that they'd recommend? I'm seeing a couple comments in the chat. Sounds like I think I've heard from folks that harvesting and bunching can be kind of challenging. So I'd love to hear if anybody else out there has recommendations. Oh, Mikey, that's great. Using color-coded flags in the field to direct people to the right area. I love that. Yeah, any other tools folks want to share that they're using? Numbering the beds, that's a great strategy. Lots of upvotes for the dump carts. It's great. All right, well, we've got a few minutes left before I wanna close us out. Are there any other questions out there for our speakers or just for anybody in the room? Anything else to share? Anything on your wish list? The broad fork. 
is a four prong tool. A broad fork. Where I use to aerate the soil easily because we don't use tractors. And tractors That's kill awesome. the worms, but broad forks keep the worms alive. We love our worms. Thanks for suggesting that, Max. Thank you. You're welcome. I know what that one is, and that's a fun one too, because you get to kind of stomp on it. <laughs> if our way, we would have um, at least two wheeled wheelbarrows or carts. We have most just one single wheel wheelbarrows, which are usually uh, just on the on the brink of having a flat tire. So that would be great. <laughs> Two wheel wheelbarrows, yeah. So and then, thanks, Olivia. And then, um, gorilla carts will hitch to a golf cart. Nice. Uh, Twenty one roots. Uh, asking how can we get an update on the paper chain pots? I think that's a question for you, Melissa. But maybe I can just keep asking you how it's going, and then we can share out with folks. Okay, I'll make a note of that. Um, and maybe here, let me turn my screen share off and we'll start to close up here. Um, that's a nice segue into kind of our, uh, our wrap up here. So we will be sharing the recording to this webinar with you all. Um, I'll include um, links that were shared today in the chat and any specific suggestions so folks can um, follow up on these awesome resources that were shared. Um, Oh, another question from Cindy. I think we've got a minute, so maybe I'll ask this out loud and see if there's any uh, wisdom out there. Does anyone have ideas for minimizing risks while feeding sheep or horses? That's a great question. Anybody wanna offer a quick suggestion there? Feeding over a fence, yep. Well, I have, uh, we don't, our neighbor has horses and I find with some of our coworkers that the, the draw of the ho horses is very powerful. So, um, we insist that if, if anyone, and I think you could do this, you know, even if it were part of your regular thing, it's not part of ours, but we insist that people be accompanied by a producer um, when they are going to feed or do whatever with the horses. I don't have any experience with sheep, uh, but but just because it's so tempting to get, to get close to the horses, everybody's tempted by that. And you know, if you trip or whatever, so we just you know, and we we hang on to people sort of, or I go to their arm <laughs> when we get close. I mean, that's, you know, but. <laughs> Thanks, Gracie. Cindy, any of that helpful? I hope. <laughs> Got a lot of, a couple good suggestions here. All right, folks, we're at our final minute. Um, thank you all so much for your participation today. This has been a great conversation. Um, I've learned a ton and I hope that you all have too. Um, like I said, we'll share the recording and links um, and suggestions to resources. I'm putting a couple of links in the chat for you. Um, we would be really grateful if you could take two to three minutes to fill out our evaluation survey um, so that we can know whether this was valuable to you and how to improve our offerings in the future. And lastly, um, we hope that you'll we'll see you at our upcoming um, monthly member gatherings. We host them each month. And I've got the link here to the event page. In April, we're gonna be hosting a group discussion on the definition and benefits of care farming. Um, not only sharing our own thoughts, but looking to you all, our members um, as pioneers in this field to share yours. Um, so we'll hope to see you there. Um, Max, Charlie, Melissa, Jen, Sean, Cindy, thank you all so much for the time you took to be here with us today and share your wisdom um, and your resources. It's um, so great to learn from you all and learn about what you're doing and you've um, inspired a great conversation. So we're very grateful to you all for joining us today. Um, I think that brings us to the very end. So I'll invite folks, if you'd like to unmute yourself and say goodbye 
and we'll leave it there. Thank you again for coming and participating. Um, we're very grateful to you all and we'll see you Bye. around. <laughs> Bye, thank you. Bye. Bye, Casey. Bye. Bye. Thank you Bye. all so much. Thank you all. Take care. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>